All right, sir. Thank you so much. All right, sir. Thank you so much. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Um, hi, guys. What's up? Hi, everyone. Uh, guys, I hope I'm clear, clearly audible to all of you. Hi, everyone. Uh, all right, guys. So it seems that uh, very less kids are there right now uh, in the live class. So, no, koi baat nahi. So, uh, hi everyone, guys. Uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, my name is Ananya, and I'm the master teacher at Vedantu for social science. And uh, so, kids, today uh, we will be starting. Uh, we will be doing a one shot of physical features of India. All right. So, if you remember, guys. Uh, yeah. Hi everyone. All right. So guys, if you remember, uh, like we have already completed uh, the entire chapter, and uh, today I'm going to discuss with you the one shot of this entire chapter. Basically, guys, what is one shot video? One shot sessions are basically the revision classes. Uh, these are the revision sessions of entire chapter. Means in this entire video, in this entire video, guys, uh, I'm going to cover the entire chapter of physical features of India. All right, so it is going to be a quick recap of entire chapter. Okay. So guys, why one shot videos are recommended? One shot videos are recommended uh, or suggested before the examinations. So if you want to quickly revise the entire chapter, one shot videos are like just amazing. Okay. So I'll do one thing, guys. Within 30-35 minutes, we will cover this entire chapter, and then we will be playing a V quiz also. Okay. Uh, hi, Drishti. Yes, after a very very long time. आप कैसे हो बेटा? Somebody आ? चलो ठीक है. So kids, today we will be dealing with the one shot of physical features of India. So without any further delay, let's get started with our session. As you all always know, guys, I always come up with the homework questions. I always give you homework questions, and I always tell you to come up with the answers in the comment section. Okay? So maybe एकदम बढ़िया बेटा. So guys, uh, last time I gave you two homework questions. The question was, barchans are found where? So it's in desert. And the second one is the northern part of the western coast is called as what? So the right answer was Konkan. Okay. So these are the two homework questions which I gave you last time. And uh, as you know, guys, today the session is going to be about one shot of physical features of India. So kids, make sure that you people are staying with me till the very end of the session so that uh, it will help you to revise the entire chapter. Okay. Uh, but guys, if you want to understand everything in detail, obviously, guys, in this session also I'm going to go in detail. But if you want to understand each and every topic in core, like if you want to dive deep into the concepts of this chapter, so I would recommend you go and watch my previous sessions. Okay, but as of now, stay with me and uh, make sure that you people are staying with me till the very end. And if you guys are new on this channel, so make sure that you people are subscribing to this channel. All right. चलो थैंक यू सो मच आई होप सब लोगों ने लाइक कर दिया वीडियो को टुडे आई कैन सी द नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स आर वेरी वेरी लेस चलो कोई बात नहीं ऑल राइट सो स्टार्ट करते हैं गाइस वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद द लाइक द वन शॉट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर ठीक है हाय सेजल सो गाइस इंडिया एज वी नो इट इज डिवाइडेड इनटू टोटल सिक्स फिजिकल डिविजंस हिमालयन माउंटेंस नॉर्दर्न प्लेन्स पेनिनसुलर प्लेटोस इंडियन डेजर्ट coastal plains and island groves okay so in this chapter we are dealing with uh, all these physical features in detail okay so these are the these are the six physical features of india guys this color is given for mountain ranges that is himalaya himalayas this green color is given for northern plains this this brown color is given for indian desert which is in rajasthan this color is given for peninsula plateau This light blue color is given for the coastal plains, which is further divided into western coast and eastern coast. And finally, we have an island group. We have Lakshadweep Island in Arabian Sea and Andaman and Nicobar Island in Bay of Bengal. Okay. So let's have a quick recap on all these physical features in detail. The very first one we had uh, Himalayan mountain ranges. Now, guys, Himalayan mountain ranges are the loftiest mountain ranges in the world, which extends from River Indus in the west. in river bromoputra in the east 
so this is the entire extension of river uh, this is the entire extension of himalayan mountain ranges now guys if you look at the length of these ranges it is for 2400 kilometers from west to east and if we consider the width of these ranges the width ranges from 400 kilometers in jammu and kashmir to 150 kilometers in arunachal pradesh now guys this entire himalayan ranges can be divided into three parallel ranges which are those three parallel ranges guys yes we have himadri we have himachal which are also known as the lesser himalayas and we have shivaliks theek okay? hai so these are the three main ranges himadri himachal and shivalik ranges the southernmost range is shivalik above shivalik we have himachal and above himachal we have himadri theek okay? hai the very first one i am going to talk about is inner himalayas or himadri so himadris are also known as inner himalayas theek okay? hai so let's know more about himadri okay these these are the northernmost ranges of himalayas i hope guys you people are able to understand if you come across any questions do let me know in the chat box okay all right so guys as we know these uh, himadri are also known as inner himalayas are also known as great himalayas guys on an average the altitude of these ranges is 6000 meters on an average the height of these mountain ranges is this range is 6000 meters and guys these ranges consist of granite and it is mostly snow bound people can you tell me what is the meaning of it is uh, snow bound it is covered by snow throughout the year theek okay? hai so guys because it is covered by snow throughout the year so we will come across many glaciers which descends from these ranges theek hai acha below himadri we have the next range that is himachal theek hai now guys these himachal ranges are lot are very compressed and altered rocks now guys why himachal ranges are altered theek hai altered means their size their shape has been changed why because of the rivers which descends from these ranges the glaciers and the rivers which descends from these ranges have altered the rocks now on an average the altitude of himachal range lies between 3700 meters to 4500 meters and if you look at the average width of these ranges it is just 50 kilometers not just 50 kilometers it is 50 kilometers theek hai acha guys now this himachal range is a very important range because it consists of many other ranges like we have peer panjal range guys peer panjal range if you look at this map this is the longest range guys and the most important range other than peer panjal range you will come across other ranges as well like the dholadhar range the mahabharat range and these are some of the very important ranges of himachal acha not only this guys it consists of many hill stations also like kashmir valley kangra valley kullu valley these are some very very beautiful sites to visit in himachal guys have you ever been to these ranges or these valleys anyone okay okay guys after himachal below himachal we have shivalik ranges so if you look at if shivalik ranges guys these are also known as the outermost range of himalayas also known as shivalik theek hai now guys if you look at the width of these ranges it is between 10 to 50 kilometers and average height average altitude is between 900 to 1100 meters theek hai now guys one interesting feature about uh, in Himal in himalayan ranges is the longitudinal valleys which lies between lesser himalayas and shivalik so guys there are many valleys which lies between lesser himalayas and shivalik these valleys are known as dunes like we have dehradun kotli dun patli dun in fact guys we have uh, iima indian military academy in dehradun guys theek <laughs> hai guys after this these were the ranges from south to north in a similar way guys these himalayan ranges can be classified into uh, further more ranges it can be divided into further ranges from west to east okay according to the rivers 
So like we have Punjab Himalayas, which lies between River Indus and River Satluj. Followed by we have Kumayun Himalayas, which lies between River Satluj and River Kali. Then we have Nepal Himalayas, which lies between River Kali and River Tista. And finally, we have Assam Himalayas between Tista and River Dihang. And guys, uh, if you look at these ranges in the northeastern part of India, these are the extended part of Himalayas, guys, okay? which are also known as Purvanchal. Okay? Now, guys, uh, if you look at these Purvanchal ranges, this entire northeastern side comprises of uh, Purvanchal ranges and it is mostly covered by dense forest. Now, guys, you can also remember some very important hills from the, uh, this range, like from uh, Purvanchal ranges, we have Patkoi Hills, Naga Hills, Manipur Hills, Mizo Hills. These are some of the very important hills from Purvanchal. So, guys, this was a quick recap of Himalayas. Any questions, guys, do let me know. If no, we can move ahead with the next one, that is Northern Plains. All right, I guess there are no more questions. Uh, what is the sold on? Yeah. Okay. Clear? Okay. Now, guys, coming to the next range, uh, next physical feature, we have Northern Plains. Now, guys, closely observe the map. You will come across the area which is shaded in green. This entire area is North Indian Plain. Now, guys, this entire North Indian Plains are formed due to the depositional work done by the rivers. Like the Himalayan rivers, three main Himalayan rivers. Indus, Brahmaputra and Ganga. So, these three rivers have deposited their materials in this area which has given rise to the most fertile plain of India. Okay? Now, guys, if you look at the extent of this North Indian Plain, it spreads over an area of 7, 7 lakh square kilometer. And it is about 2,400 kilometers long and between 240 to 320 kilometers broad. So this is what you have to remember. Now guys, this is the most densely populated physiographic division of India. Now guys, try to understand, if you look at this area guys, this area is very, very important from agricultural point of view. Why? Because of favorable conditions, like favorable climate, okay? like uh, favorable climate, availability of water, take a favorable soil. These are some of the factors which have contributed into the growth of agriculture in North Indian Plain. Now guys, here uh, like most of the kids uh, comes across a very common question, sir, what is the difference between Bhangar and Khadar? All right, so guys, uh, the rivers which are flowing from Himalayas, they are carrying a lot of sediments with it. Th those sediments are known as alluvium. And that alluvium is deposited in North Indian Plain. So this alluvium is further classified into two parts. Bhangar and Khadar. Bhangar is old alluvial and Khadar is new alluvial. Okay. So alluvial soil can be classified into further two parts. Khadar and Bhangar. Okay. Hello, okay. I didn't I don't think so like there is any question so yeah Bhumi this is a revision class which Achha, Bhangar and Khadar all right so beta alluvial soil can be classified into two uh, categories according to its age so the newer deposition of alluvium is known as Khadar and the old alluvial deposition is known as Bhangar that's it Now guys, this entire North Indian plain is further classified into three parts. Like if you remember, uh, mountains, the Himalayan mountains were divided into three ranges, Shivalik, Lesser and Great in a similar way. These North Indian plains can be classified into three parts. We have Punjab plain. Punjab plain is formed due to river Indus and its tributaries. Then we have Ganga plain. Ganga plain extends between river Ghagar and river Tista. Why it is known as Ganga plain? Because the major river is river Ganga, 
which drains in that area. And finally, we have Acha, the Ganga plain basically covers which states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and West Bengal. And guys, finally, we have Brahmaputra plain. Guys, Brahmaputra plain is nothing but Assam because river Brahmaputra flows from that area. Okay. So guys, these were the two uh, physical divisions which we did till now. Now let's continue with the next physical division. All right, guys. As I told you, this is a one-shot session. So one-shot sessions, my our main objective is to revise the entire chapter within 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. अच्छा बच्चा पार्टी at any point of time if you feel that you want to all right guys ठीक है okay guys the next one we have is peninsular plateau all right the next one we have is peninsula plateau all right and now guys at any point of time if you feel that uh, you people are having a great time with us on uh, uh, youtube guys and you people want uh, you people are interested to take our uh, paid subscription guys because there are many advantages of taking our paid subscription so you can do one thing you can just uh, check out our paid subscriptions ke link in the description box of this video कैसे चेक कर सकते हो मैं आपको क्विकली बता देता हूँ गैस दिस इज़ द वीडियो व्हिच इज़ गोइंग ऑन राइट नाउ यू कैन डू वन थिंग जस्ट यू कैन जस्ट गो टू द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स दिस इज़ शो मोर एंड यू कैन चेक आउट द लिंक ठीक है लाइक दिस आर द लिंक्स प्रो लाइट इफ यू वांट टू टेक फाउंडेशन कोर्सेस Okay, so guys, uh, we have various plans. We'll definitely tell you more about these plans. But one interesting part is if you people are new and if you guys are not aware, uh, I have a coupon code for you. So you can use that coupon code at any point of time. If you feel you'll be getting 10% off. That is AD Pro. Okay, AD Pro. All right, guys, that AD Pro is already applied uh, in that link. So if you check out the uh, website through the link which is there in the description box uh, that 10% discount is already applied right we'll definitely tell you more about that guys uh, once I complete this topic I think guys coming to the third physical division we have peninsular plateau now guys if you remember already told you in detail in my previous video that peninsular plateau was once upon a time a part of Gondwana land but due to some endogenetic movements this Gondwana land got split and uh, the part of peninsular India got drifted towards north, it collided with lower Asia and it gave rise to uh, a formation of Himalayas. So if you look at peninsular plateau guys, these are the, uh, this is the oldest landmass of India which can be further classified into two types, Central Highlands and Deccan Plateau. Means this entire plateau can be divided into Central Highlands and Deccan Plateau. Achha, if you guys are not aware, let me tell you what are plateaus? Plateaus uh, is a landform which is, guys just hold on, yeah, guys plateaus are nothing but a table land, it's a high land guys, the altitude of plateaus are less than mountains, okay, and one more difference between mountain and plateau is the top of a mountain has a peak, but the top of a uh, plateau is flat, that is what is known as a table land. Now guys, because it's a very very big plateau, uh, there are many uh, small plateaus which are a part of Central Highlands and Deccan Plateau. So if you look at the Central Highlands, it consists of many other plateaus like Malwa Plateau, Bundelkhand Plateau, Bhagelkhand Plateau, Chota Nagpur Plateau, Shillong Plateau. These are the plateaus which are situated in Central Highlands and to the south of Central Highlands, we have Deccan Plateau. And these are the Deccan plateaus, guys. These are the series of plateaus in Deccan area. Karnataka plateau, Telangana, so on and so forth. I guess try to understand, if you look at the, uh, the location of Central Highlands, it is found to the north of River Narmada. Achha, now the question arises, sir, where is River Narmada? Guys, this is River Narmada, guys. 
Aja guys, uh, I I can see guys today you people are not responding me in the chat box. I hope you people are aware that the session which you are watching right now this is a live class. This is not a pre-made session. I hope you guys are aware about this. This is not a pre-made class, guys. This is not a recorded class. This is a live class. All right. So guys, here if you look at this blue color line, yeah, if you look at this blue color line, guys, this is River Narmada. To the north of River Narmada, we have Central Highlands, and to the south of River Narmada, we have Deccan Plateau. Here you will come across like if you look at this range, we this is Aravalli Range. It is situated to the northwest of uh, River, River Narmada. Deccan Plateau. If you closely observe, Deccan Plateau uh, looks like a triangular landmass. Triangle is the uh, shape. Hai. So it looks like a triangular landmass, and it lies to the south of River Narmada. So Central Highlands to the north of River Narmada, Deccan Plateau to the south of River Narmada. ठीक है? And guys, uh, you will also come across the extension of Deccan Plateau in the northeast of India. Where you will come across some very very prominent hills, which are a part of Deccan Plateau. Like we have Garo Hills, Khasi Hills, Jenta Hills. ठीक है? It's in Meghalaya, guys. Okay. Now, guys, what are Western and Eastern Ghats, guys? This is not a separate physiographic division. Western and Eastern Ghats are basically the margins of plateaus. ठीक है? Western Ghats are basically the margins of Western uh, Western margins of Deccan Plateau. And eastern Ghats are the eastern margins of eastern margins of uh, Deccan Plateau. Okay. Like this is a Western Ghat. It is further classified into many other uh, categories. It is parallel to Western Coast. It is very simple. These are Western Ghats. This is the Western Coast. So it is parallel to Western Coast. Now, guys, uh, Western Ghats का feature समझो. Western Ghats are continuous and can be crossed through passes only. So they are continuous, guys. They are not broken in between like Eastern Ghats. अच्छा, the altitude of Eastern Ghats, Western Ghats are higher than the Eastern Ghats. Like on an average, the elevation of Western Ghats is between 900 to 1600 meters as compared to Eastern Ghats, where the altitude is just 600 meters on an average. Now, guys, one amazing feature of Western Ghats that it gives rise to orographic rainfall. Now, people, in my previous session, I taught you this concept in detail, like what is orographic rainfall. So, I want you guys to watch my previous sessions to understand what is orographic rainfall. And if you look at the highest peak of Western Ghats, not India, if you look at the highest peak of Western Ghats, it is Anaimudi, which is 2,695 meters, and Doda Beta, which is 2,637 meters. Okay, after that we have Eastern Ghats, guys. Eastern Ghats stretches from Mahanadi Valley to Nilgiris in the south. So here we have Mahanadi Valleys, and here we have Nilgiri Hills. So this entire stretch is basically Eastern Ghats. Now, guys, these Eastern Ghats are discontinuous and irregular. Now, why Eastern Ghats are discontinuous and why they are irregular? Because many rivers are descending from Eastern Ghats, like we have. Like we have River Kaveri, Krishna, Godavari, Mahanadi. These are some of the rivers which are descending from Eastern Ghats. So as these rivers are descending from Eastern Ghats, they are eroding the Eastern Ghats. That is why Eastern Ghats are discontinuous and they are irregular. Okay, and Mahindra Giri is the highest peak of Eastern Ghat, which is fifteen hundred and one meters. Bacha Badi, any questions till now? Guys, whatever I told you now, uh, like everything is given uh, in this table, the difference between Western and Eastern Ghats. So this is nothing new for you. Acha, guys, if anyone is new on this channel, make sure that you guys are subscribing to this channel. And also make sure that you people like this video. If you found this video very very useful, uh, please make sure that you guys are sharing this video with all your friends. Thank you so much. 
at any point of time if you want to join our paid sub classes guys paid subscription because there are many many advantages so the link is there in the description box of this video okay my coupon code ad pro is already applied so that you will be getting additional 10 percent off okay Achha, guys coming to the next one that is indian deserts okay now guys the place which you can see on the screen which is shaded in red this entire place is nothing but desert which are known as Indian deserts. Here we have Aravli mountain ranges. To the west of Aravli mountain ranges, we have Indian deserts. Okay. Now guys, uh, try to understand this region receives a very low rainfall. But look, maximum the area which receives rainfall is 150 mm in one year. So this is very, very less. Because the rainfall is very less, the climatic conditions are very arid. Very arid means very dry climatic conditions. Because the rainfall is very less, you will come across forest areas or are also very, very less. Bajabati, one thing you should you need to make a note of river Luni is the only major river which flows in this area. And guys, if you look at this image, these are sand dunes. So a specific shape of sand dunes are known as barchan. Barchan is basically a sand dune which is like a crescent shaped dune okay? which is of the shape of a crescent shaped all right so these crescent shaped dunes are nothing but barchans so these are sand dunes guys then we have coastal plains Bajabadi, we have two coastal plains we have western coastal plain and eastern coastal plain Guys, Western Coastal Plain uh, borders Arabian Sea and Eastern Coastal Plain borders Bay of Bengal. Okay? Western Coastal Plain is further divided into three parts. We have Konkan Coast, Kannad Plain and Malabar Coast. Okay? So these are uh, the divisions of Western Coast. In a similar way, Eastern Coast can be further classified into two major parts, Northern Sirkar and Koromandal Coast. That's one very important feature you can remember of Eastern Coast is uh, Odisha Me Lake Chilika. Okay, Lake Chilika, it's in Odisha, guys. It's a very, very important feature along the Eastern Coast. Okay. Guys, any questions still now? Okay, no questions guys. Hi Ria, what's up? Are you new in my class? If yes, then do not forget to like this video. I'm good, yeah. Thank you so much for asking. What about you? Hi Rafiq, I'm good here. Thank you so much. What about you? Acha Laiba. All right, so it's Laiba. Cool. Uh, so guys, good to see you all in my class. I guess you people are new, and this is the very first time you guys are attending my session. All right, guys. So if you people are new on this channel, yeah, let me quickly tell you. This is a one shot video which is going on. So one shot videos are basically a recap of entire chapter. So already guys, I have uploaded all the sessions of this chapter in detail. So if you want to understand everything in detail, make sure that you people are watching those videos. Okay? Chalo. That's great. Lavia, good to see you. I hope you have subscribed to our channel. Where are you from? Ajay guys, coming to the next one, uh, the last physical division that is island groups. We have two island groups, Lakshadweep Island in Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal Island in Andaman and Nicobar, uh, Andaman Nicobar Island in Bay of Bengal. Okay? Coming to the very, very first one guys, Lakshadweep Islands. Where Lakshadweep Islands lies very, very close to Malabar coast that is Kerala. It consists of very small coral islands. Now guys, today if you look at the name Lakshadweep, it was named in 1973. But before that, it was known as Lakadeep, Minikoi, 
and Amin Devi. Now, guys, the area is so small, like it covers an area of not more than 32 square kilometer, and Kavar the island is the administrative headquarter of this uh, island, that is Lakshadweep. Guys, try to understand the island is very very small, but still, it has a great diversity of flora and fauna. Flora and fauna means plants and animals. One feature you can remember is Pity Island has a bird sanctuary. Guys, there is an island which has bird sanctuary and that is Pity Island. That's great, yeah. Bot badi alaiva. Okay, guys, the next one we have is Andaman and Nicobar Island Groves. Guys, it's a chain of island located in Bay of Bengal extending from north to south. Now, guys, these island groups are bigger in size and are more numerous and scattered. Bohot sare islands hai isme, thik hai? In fact, it is classified into two, Andaman in the north and Nicobar in the south. Now, guys, if you go to Andaman and Nicobar Island, basically, you people are going to stand on a peak of a mountain. So, basically, Andaman and Nicobar Island, jo hai, those are the peaks of submerged mountains. Aja guys, uh, yaad rakna, India uh, doesn't lies in equatorial zone. Still, Andaman and Nicobar Island sometimes experiences equatorial climate. Why? Because uh, Andaman and Nicobar Island is located very close to the equator. Uh, hi everyone, I can see many latecomers in the class. Achha. So guys, after having a brief understanding of these six physical divisions about Himalayas, North Indian Plain, uh, deserts, peninsula plateau, coastal plains and islands. Okay? Now guys, let's talk about the impo importance of this physiographic division. Like how this, uh, how these physiographic divisions are so important for us. First of all guys, mountains. Guys, mountains are the major source of water and forest wealth. Northern plains are the granaries of the country. The main occupation of the people living in northern plain is agriculture. It actually provides food to the entire country. Plateaus are the storehouse of minerals. And when any area is a storehouse of minerals, it will definitely contribute into industrialization. And the coastal plains and island groups provide sites for fishing and port activities. So guys, this is how all these physiographic divisions are so important for us. Alright, Bacha Party. So guys, this was a quick recap of entire chapter. As I told you guys uh, that I will be telling you more about our paid classes. So guys, if you people are interested to take our paid classes, we have three plans. Listen to me very, very carefully. We have Pro Light, Pro Classic and AI Live. But uh, AI Live is basically the recorded classes. Okay, matlab. At 9,000 rupees, you will be getting physics, chemistry, bio, SST, English and mathematics for entire year. Now, I'll be like, hey, sir, if these sessions are recorded, so uh, why not to continue watching the sessions on YouTube? At least you come live. Guys, try to understand. That when you take this subscription, guys, AI Live, for entire year, it is just 9,000 rupees. With that, if you apply my coupon code AD Pro, it will come down to 8100, guys. Look, here I coupon code apply kiya, AD Pro, it came down to 8100. Benefits, what is On YouTube, you will not get Tattva. Those are the notes which are made by your master teachers. You cannot, okay, you will not get any assistance, any help. You will not get test series or assignments on YouTube. But all these things are available for you guys at just 9000. After applying my coupon code AD Pro, it will come down to 8100. Achha. If you want that your classes should be live with the master teachers, then you can go for Pro Light or Pro Classic. Take it. The basic difference between Pro Light and Pro Classic is in Pro Classic, obviously the master teacher will be live, but your doubts will be taken after the class also, from morning 8 a.m. till evening 10 p.m. Kabi bhi doubts put sakte, and with many other advantages. Achha. With that. You have an option of EMI also, so you can take the EMI option, not for recorded classes. Okay. All right, Bacha Party. So this was all about in today's class, guys. Thank you so much yeah, for being a part of this session. Link is there in the description box. AD Pro is my coupon code. Try using this code and get additional 10% off on all our plans. 
and thank you so much kids for being a part of this session do not forget to like share and subscribe to this channel and i will see you guys in my next video till then take very very good care of yourself bye guys take care